Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand. 80 days ago, I started the second stage of bioremediation here on my property, taking the green contaminated waste and storing it in a small 16 gallon bin. Now, this whole thing was an experiment. I wasn't sure how this was gonna work. I didn't know what it was gonna look like, but the effort was being undertaken to try to see if I couldn't attract black soldier flies to this bin and get them to lay their eggs so that the end result would be black soldier fly larva. And to my amazement, it worked. So I'm gonna show you this process from beginning to end and some of the tweaks that I'm gonna to have to make along the way because this recipe that I used was just experimental. I had no idea if it was gonna work or not. But again, it did. I am gonna to have to tweak it a bit going forward though. So come with me and you're gonna see how everything went all the way through the end result process, getting things ready for the third stage of bioremediation with African night crawlers. So let's go do it. Now down in the description box below, if you're not familiar with black soldier flies and their larvae, I'm gonna leave you some links that are gonna give you some really incredible background information on them. But basically, anywhere in the Western hemisphere that has both tropical or subtropical climates, you're gonna find black soldier flies. They're native, they're wild populations in those areas, so you don't normally have to worry about it. Plus, in all honesty, over the past 10 to 15 years, there's been so much made about their abilities to process free green waste they're practically all over the world now. But with that being said, the reason why I'm going this route is because for any of you that have been following me for some time, uh, you'll know that one of the reasons I'm going through a process of bioremediation is because of all the garbage that I pulled out of my property. I mean, it is just atrocious. And I have a feeling that there is heavy metal contamination in my soil. So I decided to go with a closed bin system. It's a little 16 gallon bin with a lid and a water tub. This will hopefully protect me from guys like this, and guys like this, and really big guys like this. These geckos and lizards can wreak havoc on larvae. And you know, I've got scorpions, I've got snakes. I mean, you guys get the idea. I've got the whole zoo right outside my front door and I never know who's gonna show up. So a closed 16 gallon bin in a water tub it is. And what I really wanna make sure of is that a black soldier fly can actually get in here to lay its eggs, but I guess we'll just have to see. Now, I don't have the actual plants for the phytoremediation that I need, but these weeds will do. Um, I do have the water mimosa on my property, but this is really prickly, thorny stuff. And in all honesty, I don't really think it's something that would be good for the worms to eat or even the larvae to eat. So, I mean, yeah, they're just going to get excluded from this mix. And plus, they're a lot better at nitrogen fixing. So I think I'm just going to leave them in the ground to continue to do that. So until the Indian mustard and white mustard that I've ordered from the United States arrives, which is what's going to be used for the actual phytoremediation on my property, uh, these native weeds will do. So I'm going to test things out with these weeds. And one of the other things I'm going to need in addition to the weeds for the ingredients is going to be something to pickle the greens with. And so Grand Natural Farming to the rescue. My favorite input, LAB, lactic acid bacteria. I went with about a 1 to 1,000 mix between that and RO water. And what this is going to do is it's just going to give me a chance to spray the greens down and hopefully get a really good scent going that the flies will be attracted to. So now it's just a process of, you know, chopping things up. I mean, I, I don't just take it from the, the base of the plant from the ground and throw it in. I, I try to, you know, at least get it down to manageable sizes. Uh, that way it's not hopefully such a mess later on. Um, but yeah, just, you know, chop it into thirds, fourths, whatever you want to do. And just get yourself a really good level, um, maybe about a quarter full. And the mistake that I made here in the initial going is that, you know, I did spray it down with LAB right here, but I didn't add the other ingredient, which I'm going to be throwing into this test, in, you know, this test mix, which is white rice. I waited until later, which I don't suppose it really matters, but I just, I waited until it was almost about three quarters full before I added the rice. So what you're seeing me do right now is I'm just, I'm spraying it down still with some lactic acid bacteria. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little hole here in the center. Now, the rice that I'm using is just steamed rice, and it's going to look like it has soy sauce and stuff on it. It, <laughs> it doesn't. It, uh, these were left at the outside of my house to go ahead and kind of, um, well, get nasty. Uh, we use white rice in natural farming quite a bit for inhabiting you know, microorganisms and capturing IMOs with. So this is perfect for me to just get some of the stuff into the bin that I want, and the lactic acid bacteria yeah, it's, it basically is the cops of the bacterial world. It is the good guys, it gets in there, it takes care of the bad guys. And it's exactly what I want 
you know, moving forward with this, you know, with this test ingredient. Um, and you only have to add it this one time when you're first getting things set up. You don't have to continue to add it after this initial setup. It's just a one-time dose that you spray the greens and the rice down with. And, and that's really just it. I mean, you just go ahead and you do this and then, you know, put the lid on it, cover the thing up, and then just go ahead and let it sit for about a week or so. Now, I did this and I went about 10 days. And afterwards, I was, uh, I was pretty happy with what I saw. Oh yeah, it smells like sour mash. But that's what you're looking for. And by sour mash, I mean, if you've ever smelled Southern Comfort, it's like a sour mash whiskey smell. That's what this smells like. And it obviously is from the lactic acid bacteria and the rice getting together and the greens. It's just starting to give off that odor, that scent of just a sour mash smell. Hopefully this is gonna be attracting uh, the flies to this bin so that they'll lay their eggs and will wind up with larva. Um, but they haven't shown up yet and you've got to make sure that you don't get discouraged. It's very easy to think, well, this just isn't going to work. I'm just going to wind up with a big old sloppy mess. Don't get discouraged because, I mean, even I got a little discouraged at this point. I was getting close to almost a month from the time that I started the bin and uh, they still hadn't shown up. And so, you know, it's just, it's a matter of just, you know, it's kind of rinse and repeat at this point. You know, you let the thing go for about seven to 10 days, you check on it. And if the larvae haven't shown up yet, you just, you know, you add your rice, you add your cut up greens and you just keep going, you wait for them. Um, obviously, you know, you don't want the bin overflowing and I try to never really load it up uh, beyond full because I want there to be at least a little bit of an air gap so that that, that scent can just waft in the air. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's real easy to get discouraged and I just want to encourage all of you that are watching this. Don't just keep doing it. Just keep adding the rice, add the greens and it will eventually happen. It will. But even I got discouraged here a little bit and, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny actually. What's that? That is now a full bin of worn food. And it is just going to stay covered and rested until the worms arrive. And when they do arrive, I'm going to mix it and stabilize it. And then we'll feed them. That is it. Oh, ye of little faith, have patience. I just want to caution anybody, if you are squeamish about bugs or larvae or maggots or anything like that, just close your eyes for a moment. Don't skip. Just close your eyes. I'll tell you when you can open them again. That right there, that's what you're looking for. Okay, you can open your eyes now. <laughs> so the very next day, I was given a gift of some mangosteens. This is my favorite tropical fruit. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, what does this have to do with the black soldier flies and your eventual worm food? Well, let me tell you, in addition to this being delicious, the mangosteen shell, this reddish pinkish shell, this is loaded full of nutrient. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below so you guys can see for yourselves just what's contained inside of these things. But I decided now that the flies had shown up that this was, excuse me, that the larvae had shown up, that this was gonna be the last time I was gonna feed the bin. I just figured whatever's left in there, I want them to continue to process through for the rest of the month. Because as we get into September, uh, that's when the fungal compost should be completed and that's when I really need to make sure that these guys are done. But as you can see, I've just got an absolute ton of BSFL in here and they went through the rice, they went through the greens, but the mangosteen shells, they didn't really take apart. I mean, they're in them, they're eating them, but they're not really going to town the way I'd hoped. But now I've got to check the pH because this is critical to this whole process. And as you can see, it's sitting on a four and a half, way too acidic for the worms way way too acidic so as we got into september this was kind of like uh this was the finishing time for everything the fungal compost um the processing from the black soldier fly larva and as you can see they're already getting ready to pupate they're starting to turn brown in color uh, the ones that are still alive are still down in there i'm going to try to attract them out by using a plate of food 
And this actually worked very well. I was able to get about three to 4,000 of them out of this bin just by getting them to go onto the plate. Really easy, just let them get there, pull them out, simple. But now it's time to get these alkalizing ingredients put together. This is the fungal compost that I'm gonna be um, putting together with some reverse osmosis water and some crushed up powderized eggshell. And this is all in the process of raising the pH. Really, really critical for the success of this process. Now, I wanna emphasize because this is gonna be hard for you guys to see in the early going here because it's pretty dark in there. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mashing this stuff down. Um, and unfortunately, along with that is gonna be some of the larva. Don't beat yourself up about that. That's what these guys are here to do. This is their job. So whether they evacuated the bin or not, they've done their job and now it's time to move into the uh, final stage of bioremediation, which is turning this into worm food. So, I have not even touched these materials since I first started to add them to the bin. And by that, I mean, I, I've never mixed them. I've never mashed them. I've just allowed the decay and the, um, uh, the decomposition process to happen naturally. Uh, but as I started to go through it and I started to mix it, as you can see, it's becoming more like a slurry. But one of the things I definitely noticed is that there's a lot of fibrous weedy material that's in this mix. I mean, it's, it's all through it, especially down towards the bottom. So you want to be conscious of that as you uh, as you continue to mix your items in. But here, what we're adding right now is crushed up powderized eggshell. And this is serving two really important functions. One, it's going to be adding some grit to the mix, which the fungal compost alone is going to be the type of grit that the worms need because they're earthworms. But two, it is going to raise the pH. The calcium carbonate in this is extremely powerful. But now do you see that dust? Please, please, please do not do this without a face mask. I don't want to find anybody repeating this process that winds up with any type of a respiratory infection because they didn't wear one. Um, make sure that you wear a mask so you don't huff any of this dust. But the reason I add this first is I really want to make sure that I get this, this powderized eggshell all through this mix as best I can. Um, it's going to be the most critical ingredient of the alkalizing ingredients in here. And I just want to try to mix it as thoroughly as possible. So I just started to stir it mash it and just get it as deep into the bin as I could and just mixed around as well as I could so that I could ensure that it's through as much of it as possible. But now after that finishes, what you're going to be adding next is your RO water. And the RO water here in my area is a straight seven. It's a seven pH. So this is going to do nothing more than just continue to add the hydroxide ions that I need to be able to really raise the pH. After that, give it a few stirs, and now it's time to finally add your compost. Now, it doesn't have to be fungal compost like I'm using, but I like the fungal compost because it's just, in my opinion, it's, it's a better balanced pH to mix in. Um, sure, composting is a, a very acidic process, uh, but the end result of the cold, pro uh, the cold composting that I did here, I think has definitely helped uh, raise the pH on this because as I continue to mix this in very slowly, you don't add it all at once. Um, you can after you, you know, once it starts to become muddy like this, you can go ahead and just dump the whole batch in. But these ingredients, the, the RO water, the powderized eggshell, and this fungal compost has definitely done the pH well. As you remember, when I was first measuring the pH just back in late August, it was sitting on a four and a half. That's really, really acidic stuff. I mean, that's 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 beyond acidic, but I'm very happy to report that after I got all of this stuff mixed in, and I mean, I, I took my time with this. This was not just a, you know, a simple five minute process. This took me about an hour to get everything done and done right until it was really nice and muddy like this. But once I got everything mixed in together, folded in together and mashed together, I'm happy to report and I'm gonna have to ask you to forgive uh, for what you're about to see here because it's a horrible picture. But take a look at that. 48 hours later, the pH is almost a neutral seven. All right, so we have the food in its own water tub now over here with the worms. And I'm gonna keep it sealed with the lid for the next 24 hours because if anything did make it through that processing, I wanna find out about it before I take the lid off. Um, 
once I verify that no ants, no other larva or anything else is still in the bin, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of burlap and just use some clothespins to cover the top. That way you can evaporate out the water, become more mud-like, and uh, hopefully stabilize the pH. So that is the process for stage two of the bioremediation. We're now getting ready for stage three, which is going to be including the African night crawlers. That's coming up next. Indeed it is. I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you haven't already, please like and share it. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be alerted when I upload new content. Wherever you are in this world today or tonight, take care. Bye for now.